moment of the moment you wait for, you better not let it go. You can be a lab assistant in the bar. Yes, you can. You have to pay me 30 dollars an hour. Oh, 32. Oh, 13. Yeah, that's actually a pretty hard, good bargain. Are you good at cleaning glassware? Uh, yes. Okay. I've done it. I've done it many days. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, let's pick up where we left off. Hey, Aiden's here now. Aiden's here. Uh oh, picture attendance, dude. You gotta take your dance again. <laughs> Okay, so we left off yesterday talking about mirrors and the uh, types of images that mirrors produce and uh, I identified what all these variables are. These variables are in your formula chart. I will warn you though, um, some old textbooks don't use D sub O and D sub I. They use P and Q because they're dumb. Uh, but we're going to follow the college board's lead and say DO and DI. Just in case you happen to be online looking at a tutorial and they use P and Q instead of DO and DI, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so anyway, so we talked about there are six different words we use to describe images. What uh, What's the first set of words we use to describe an image? Virtual or real. Yeah, virtual or real. Something is virtual when the image forms where the light is not. Okay. That's the best way I can explain it. If the light is where the image is, it's a real image. If the image is on the opposite side of the light, it's a virtual image. Now a mirror, light bounces off a mirror, so if our object is here and our image is also here, this is the real side, this is the virtual side. Also, when we have virtual <laughs> things, virtual things will get a negative value for di and f. Um, when is f virtual? For a mirror, what is F virtual? Oh, when it's a for a convex right. mirror, exactly. So if the if the light is if the mirror is bending towards you, so if the mirror is bending towards you and the light diverges, then the oh. F over here is going to be a negative F. It's going to be a virtual. Because that's where one. the focal point is. Because that's where the focal point is. It's a virtual focal point. All right. So I think we hammered that all out. Um, and then the second set of words we use are. Yeah, if it's reduced or magnified. So if our magnification is larger than one, it's magnified. If our magnification is smaller than one, it's reduced. And then finally, we talk about the orientation of the image and what words do we use for those? Upright and inverted. So if M is a positive value, that means the HI and the HO are both positive values or both negative values, and you'll have an upright image. If one of these is negative, in other words, one's facing up and one's facing down, then you'll have a negative M, that's an inverted image. And we're going to do some examples of that in just a little bit. Okay. Um, if you're ready to move on, give me a thumbs up. If you want to review a little more from yesterday, wave your hand around. I just need some notes real quick. You need some notes really quick? Okay, yeah, that's fine. <coughs> get, some, get some notes right quick. Um, you mean like virtual rays? Yeah. Uh, not really. Um, so basically an image is formed where the rays converge. If the rays diverge, as in a convex lens, because it's curving this way, like rays diverge, then the rays have to basically create, a, create information that your body or your brain says, oh, that's an image back here. It's basically taking in all the data and saying the image is back here. It's a little more oh, complicated than I'm, yes. than I'm prepared to explain. Um, okay, so we move on. All right, so uh, now we're going to talk about what causes waves to move. Um, refraction, we're talking about reflection. That's just the bouncing. Refraction is when the waves change speed due to media. Okay. Again, we talked about yesterday that when you increase the optical density, the wave speed goes what, up or down? When you increase the optical density from like air to glass, the wave speed goes down, down okay? Because that material has to get absorbed into atoms and then spit from atom to atom to atom to atom. That wave energy has to go from atom to atom so it slows down. So the changing of wave speed is refraction. Refraction, um, and it happens when you enter a new, new medium. Maybe it goes up, maybe it goes down. 
So refraction occurs when light goes from water to air, and it goes from air to water. Um, and the best way I can explain refraction, is the way it's usually explained, is imagine you're driving a go-kart. You know what a go-kart is? A little four-wheel vehicle? Imagine yeah. driving a go or, or an ATV or something. You know what I'm talking about. You're driving a go-kart on the sidewalk, and then you're not paying attention, and you kind of drift into a lawn. So you got your sidewalk, you're cruising along the sidewalk, there's a lawn over here, and you're like, oh, my phone rang. And you drift onto the lawn, that front wheel is going to catch the lawn. What's going to happen to your go-kart? It's going to, is the whole thing going to slow down uniformly? No. No. That front wheel is going to slow down. That's going to cause your go-kart to do what? Spin. Turn a little bit. Okay? It's like, whoop. So if a ray comes along, let's say, let's say the, the screen here is um, one media and the not screen is another media. Imagine you have a two-dimensional thing going in, boop, boop, traveling that direction. Which side is going to hit the hit the screen first? The top or the bottom? The bottom's going to hit first, and the bottom is going to turn first. And then the this side is going to turn later. So that's why it doesn't go straight out. It kind of goes whoop because this side hits the new medium first from faster to slower. Does that make sense? So that's what's going on when we take our laser and we shoot it um, from water to air. It is most pronounced when you shoot it from water to air. So you'll notice, look at the angle of my laser and look at the angle of the beam in the water. Pretty different, right? Because it's slowing down. The laser's going up and then it's turning a little bit because it's going into a new medium. Now the same thing happens when you go from uh, air to water, but it's a little less pronounced. It's a little bit harder to see. It's a lot easier when you go from like water, from air to water like that. But, oh my goodness, that's just ridiculous. Look at that. Okay. So the difference in medium causes the light to change speed, which causes the light to bend a little bit, just like in our prism. That's called a Newton's prism. I don't know why it's called a Newton's prism. That's why it's called a Newton's prism. So the light rays are going to bend, and some are going to bend more than others, depending on their wavelength. So if you look at that, you're like, oh, it bent a little bit. The red bent that much, and the purple bent that much. And that's called dispersion, where the lights are separated. That burning sensation you feel? That burning sensation you feel? That's just learning. Yeah. I can't remember who made that for I can see. Hopefully she signed it. That was America. That was America? You gotta have her come up and sign this. She probably signed it on the back, but it's on the wall. Okay, so. Okay, are we good to move on? Now there is another wave moving phenomenon that we are not going to discuss, and that is diffraction. Diffraction is the bending of waves um, from basically moving the waves in a different kind of direction. Instead of going like a straight wave, it becomes a circular wave. Okay. Um, you encounter diffraction when you look at something along like a needle point. Um, if you put a needle, needle point up to something bright, the, the needle point gets a little fuzzy. You know what I'm talking about? You can do the same thing if you take your, your pen and go to the window and hold it up and like the end of it kind of gets a little fuzzy. Um, that's diffraction. We are not going to talk about diffraction in this class. We are going to basically focus our attention on what's called geometric optics. Diffraction is the realm of something called physical optics. So we're not going to focus on diffraction. But just realize that's what it is. It's the bending of waves. The best, best way to talk about diffraction is you have a wave um, that's, let's say it's two dimensional, and you're walking along, and you hit someone else who's walking the other direction, and that kind of you to bend a little bit. Refraction. Okay, so we're not going to talk about that because that's refraction. All right, refraction. Here is the mnemonic. If density goes up, angle goes down. Okay. Everything in science is balanced, right? If, number, if the exponent goes up, the mantissa goes down. If the unit goes up, the number goes down. If the density of the material goes up, the wave angle goes down. If the density goes down, the angle's going to go up. Let me show you what I mean. In shining my laser from air to water, boop, when I 
like that. See, can you imagine there's a normal right here? Let me back up a little bit. You can imagine there's a normal right here. I'm gonna shine my laser like that. Okay. The angle is this, from the normal to where my laser is. Okay. That's my angle of incidence right there. Is my density going up or down? That laser goes from air to water. Density's going up. And notice what look happened to the angle. Let get a little closer to you. Notice what happens to the angle. The angle to the normal goes down. The angle to the normal is like this is the normal from there, from there to there to the word laser, from the normal to the right laser. So the angle of incidence is larger than the angle of refraction. By the density going up from air to water, the angle of refraction has gone down. I want you to understand this, but I also don't want to beat a dead horse and waste time. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay, we're going to explain it here in a second. We're going to go back to our cat example. There's the cat. Once again, in this in this frame, is the cat looking at the fish, or is the fish looking at the cat? No. The cat is looking at the fish. So the environment is illuminating the fish, and the light is hitting the fish's eye. In this environment, the, in, the environment is lighting up the cat, and the cat, is, the beams are leaving the cat, hitting the fish's eye, and the fish is looking at the cat. So look at, let's look at uh, this one first. Density is going up or down? Uh, water or air? Down. Uh, density is going down. 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 Uh, water from air. water to air, light density down. is going down. Okay. Well, the light is going from the water to the air, so air is less dense, so density is going down, and look what's happening to the angle. The angle's going up. There's the angle of incidence, there's the angle of refraction. Can you see this? So the beam is going from the cat, from the fish to the cat. That, this is the angle of incidence, this is the boundary. Normal is always perpendicular to the boundary. So there's the boundary, there's the normal. The angle of incidence is smaller than the angle of refraction. This is the angle of incidence, Light is traveling to a less dense medium that makes the angle of refraction larger. Capiche? Verstehen? Caprende? I forgot what it is in French. What? Say again. Cum. Cum. Paul. Cum Paul. No. Write it down. Yeah, write it down for me. Write it down phonetically for me. Okay. Capish, understand? Comprende? Understand? Um, on the other case, over here, the light is going from air to water. And as it goes from air to water, the density goes up because you're going from air to water. Air is more dense, so you would expect the angle of refraction to go down, and it does. This is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of refraction. Cool? Sick. All right. So let's, let's take apart this other diagram. I love this diagram. I think it's from an old textbook. Might have been from your old textbook, the textbook your, your ancestors used. So as the light goes from air to water, the speed goes up or down. Think about this. This is important. As light goes from air to water, if you think the speed goes, we're talking about this diagram, if you think the speed goes up, give me a thumbs up. If you think the speed goes down, give me a thumbs down. Yeah, speed's going down, it's slowing down. Light is slowing down. It's kind of like this is the go-kart, and then this is the go-kart, and then it, boop, it grabs the edge. Like, in the line, okay? I totally get that. Awesome, okay, that was going, getting it is what I was going for. And the opposite of this case is also true. As uh, you go from a more dense to a less dense, the speed is going up or down. Up, speeding up. Now, it can never travel faster than three times 78 meters per second. Now, there's this number. It's n. n is the index of refraction. It is the index of refraction. I'm gonna, it's on the next slide, I think. Um, and it is the ratio of how fast light is traveling to how fast the, it would be traveling in a vacuum, three times 10 to the eighth. Is that in there? Nope. Okay. All right, so let's back up a little bit and say, all right, why is this drawn right here? Well, the cat 
is boop, 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 lights going boop, and then seeing it, and the cat's saying, oh, light moves in straight lines, because that's what our brain thinks. Our brain thinks light moves in straight lines, so the cat thinks the fish is right there. Kind of like if you were to put something in here, it, it bends a little bit, because your brain doesn't realize that the light moves. It just I, sees what it sees. I totally understand this because of Hatchet. I don't know what that is. And hatchet then, the similarly, book. the fish, the fish sees the light coming from the cat, but the fish says, oh, it's only a straight line, so the cat, the fish sees the cat appear. Which is why when you're a ninja, if you have, if you got the little um, bamboo tube and you're breathing the bamboo tube, and your target, you're in the, you're in the river, and the river's going by, they can't see you. You're really close to the shore, so you're really close to the shore, they can't see you. And you get your blow dart gun, which is a poison dart, you need to shoot your, your, uh, your, you need to assassinate somebody. You aim not at them, you aim where? Yeah, you aim for the crotch. Yeah, because if you, if you aim for where you think they are, you're going to go whoosh, and you're going to miss them. But if you aim for the crotch, then you actually might hit their heart. So. Something to think about. When you're a ninja trying to assassinate someone, then you're in the water, you see the person, don't aim at the person, because you're gonna miss them, you're gonna shoot over their head. You might hit them in the eye, but you're probably gonna miss them. So aim for their crotch and get them in the heart. Why is that so oddly specific? I mean, uh, Personal experience. <laughs> All right. So, the index of refraction is a ratio of how fast light moves in that media, medium, in that media, uh, yeah, medium, uh, in that medium, versus how fast light travels in a vacuum. The, um, so, fast you can be, slow. The index of refraction of air is about one. The index of refraction of vacuum is exactly one. The faster something moves, the larger the, in sorry, the slower something moves, the larger the index of refraction. Now, these numbers might not look like a lot, diamond being 2.4. Part of the reason diamond is used in so many, in, in jewelry, because it's very, very easy to manipulate the light in diamond. So it might not look like a lot, 2.4 doesn't seem like a lot, but it is huge. What about like an opal? So opals have a bunch of weird colors on them. Mm -hmm. Probably pretty close to the same thing. Very dense, very dense, transparent things have very high indexes of refraction. Rubies, di diamonds, sapphires. These are minerals that are transparent, but are also extremely dense. So they have very high index of refractions. The numbers that we use most common are water at 1.3 and glass at 1.6. In the lab, we're going to use water primarily because I don't. These are these are dangerous, and ethyl alcohol, which we have, is uh, pretty much the same as water, and glycerin makes a huge mess. So we're primarily just going to use water. Doesn't help is only like one point four two. Can you explain the uh, top numbers? Yes. So n is the index of refraction, and it is a ratio of how fast the light moves in the material versus how fast it moves in a vacuum. <coughs> so if you're in a vacuum, it's moving at C, index of refraction is just one. If you are in water, then C is 3.0, this is two point less. Um, so let's say this is two and this is three, then the index of refraction would be three halves. 1.5. So in benzene, light travels at two times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, and this is Snell's law. Snell's law basically takes into account a bunch of little laws: the formula for index of refraction, the law of reflection, the law of refraction, and says, "Hey, let's put it all together," and you get N i sine theta i equals N r sine theta r. And this is the lab. This is the formula we're going to use in the lab on Monday. We're going to shoot lasers. We're going to shoot lasers through little cups of water and measure their their uh, change in speed by measuring their change in refraction. So n i sine theta i 
equals nr sine theta r. Make sense? On your formula chart. Now let's back up a slide, go back to the cat and fish, and look at this. So in this example, n i sine theta i equals n r sine theta r. The n i is down here at 1.33 sine. What do you think this angle looks like? You know, let's just measure it. I got I got protraction devices. Oh, by the way, um, in your lab. Protractors are over here with the uh, with the rulers. They're hiding in, in with the rulers. There, is there was, oh yeah, here they are. So yeah, the protractors are over with the rulers. So to measure this, you can do this in the lab. Be careful. Protractor. You put the, uh, okay, two ways to measure this. One way is to put the zero on the normal, or on the, the boundary, and measure from 90. Yeah. Okay, you can do this. Uh, I can. The other way is to put the zero on the normal and just measure the actual angle. You understand there's a difference? Mm -hmm. So if I do it this way, this <coughs> is ah, 20, 23 degrees. It's harder to mess up. Okay, okay. Yeah, this way you have to go 90, and this is 20, Three and actually this Nine. one's actually got this does measure backwards. So you basically get 23 degrees. So this angle here is 23 degrees. So sine of 23 equals nr, and we're going to error. What's the index of a fraction of error? One. One. What's the angle? What is that angle? Forty-six. Forty-five. It might be. I don't know what it is. This is the part where you grab a calculator and you bang on the calculator and you figure out what that sine theta r is. I need you to be able to do this because you're going to be doing this in lab. It worked. Anybody else need a calculator? Anybody else? Anybody else? Uno mas? Dos mas? Hey now, you're an all star. Because <laughs> you're game on. The athlete dropped it. Hey now, you're a good one. Hey, I'm a bad guy. Hey, this is not a bad athlete. That's a good point. What? 